So I am a metamorphic petrologist, so uh -huh. the um, kind of everything in between the igneous world and the sedimentary world is uh, my stomping ground. Got it. Um, so my specialty is uh, the deep earth, so uh, down deep below our feet where we can't uh, see directly, so we need to actually listen to what the rocks have to tell us to figure out what's going on down there because of course what goes on down at depth uh, really controls so much of what we see up at the surface. In addition to being a metamorphic petrologist, geochronologist is the other hat that I wear uh, and is specifically um, using the uranium lead system in zircon and some other minerals as well and especially dealing with the really messy and complicated rocks. Right. Uh, so the things Mike Eddy wouldn't want to touch with a barge pole for his technique. Um, and so really it's kind of the other end of the spectrum. So it's the spatial resolution rather than the time resolution that we're trying to go after. So the precision in terms of ages is much, much lower than what uh, Mike Eddy and his group can get. But the advantage is we have the spatial resolution so we can actually analyze individual zones within single crystals. Um, and so some of these things, you pull them apart and they have two, three, four, five different growth episodes, different ages, different trace element signatures. Uh, we can look at the mineral inclusions that are inside the zircons to tell us more about what is the geologic significance of the age yeah. that we're getting at. In other words, it isn't just the age of the rock. Uh, this rock has had a long, complicated history, so we need to connect the age that we measure to something geologically meaningful that we're interested in. Is an andesite here? Yeah, around uh, around the other side there. Let's go find that one. And sure. Grab a couple others if we can. Do On our way. Others. Yes. Uh, yeah. This was a really fun project. Uh, so finding out as part of the construction of this building, there were these large boulders that were going to be part of the landscaping, yeah. and that we got to pick them out. And so we have a mix. Um, and so anyone interested in checking it out should go to that website or scan that QR code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what the, what the quarry was, what's cool is you can see some cross bedding um, in there kind of at a large scale. So these scratches aren't just saw marks, like this is some actual bedding in the rock, but then you can see here, these layers are coming and truncated against that surface there. So that was pretty cool. We got some belt supergroup stuff with some ripple marks oh, yeah, yeah. over there. That was another uh, purchase. This is um, purchase. Yeah, so this was one of the ones we purchased. Um, so you can see, um, you know, 1.4 billion year old ripple marks that you can come and put your hand on, which is really cool. So this was purchased from uh, Maranacos, the rock uh, company over on the Issaquah area. Yep. And it's a nice coarse grained specimen. We were thinking of all these things with um, teaching in mind yeah. and for people to come by and, and check them out. This was another purchased one. Uh, of a silt stone. Um, I believe that was another belt supergroup. What's here? This is a piece of the twin sisters dunite. This is our largest block right here. This beautiful fresh olivine. Um, we got a number of blocks of this uh, around the building. So this was donated to us by the Olivine Corporation uh, based in the Bellingham region. So they have a quarry in the twin sisters dunite. They're quarrying the olivine for industrial purposes. I believe they're one of only two of those in the US. Um, and uh, so it gets used for all sorts of interesting uh, purposes. And so one of our alums had done some consulting work for them and uh, put me in touch with them. And uh, so we're very appreciative uh, of that donation. Um, and then another one of my favorites is this boulder of Titan andesite right here next to the parking area. Uh, so this is out. Uh, collected in the Yakima area just off of Highway 12 and what I love about it it's got this beautiful kind of water worn rounded surface um, and you can you know if you zoom in you can see yeah. some of the crystals in there I think you've already shown that nicely in the field but this is a mm -hmm. beautiful specimen uh, here that we have right in our own rock garden I must say it was a whole ton of fun going out there with uh, BJ the uh, truck operator and just seeing him use this giant hydraulic claw and just like picking this thing up and turning it around and putting the back of the truck and uh, and we have another piece of Titan andesite over here which is kind of different from the okay. same locality but a different level in the flow this one over here much more 
vesicular, and of course we couldn't miss the Chelan Migmatite. Oh, this has got your um, name written all over it. Are you kidding me? Yeah, these are beautiful. So I had scoped out this locality, and Rex took care of getting the uh, appropriate permissions and going out oh, there yeah. with DJ. It was like the first snowstorm before Thanksgiving, and those guys were out there for like a 12-hour day collecting rocks. Um, it was it was really great. So yeah, thinking about how we could have this display, and one thing that's that's nice. Um, so we came up with the idea of having a timeline etched in the floor of one of the hallways of our building. And so one thing that I think is really pretty unusual is to see a geologic timeline at true scale. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, all the Precambrian is just scrunched down into this little, uh, little corner and um, you don't actually appreciate that it's 88% of geologic time. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even uh, as a uh, geochronologist, it was really impressive to see this when it was installed. So it's here in the south hallway in our building. This is the hallway that goes past a lot of our main classrooms. Uh, and so as you walk towards the exit, you'll notice there's this stripe etched in the floor. Um, and as you come over on the right-hand side, you'll see we have the major divisions of geologic time as well as the age in millions of years laid out. So the scale of this is one half inch equals a million years. Um, so that makes the whole timeline a little less than 200 feet long. Uh, and so we'll see, hey Brennan, we'll see the other end of the timeline is down at the far end of the hall near that open door that you can see there. So that's the beginning. That's the beginning but let's start it today. Oh, you want to go backwards? Um, well, we'll go backwards, yeah. So one thing I think is, is cool. So here's today. And if you take one big step, we're back to where the dinosaurs were. Here's the Cretaceous, right? So here's the, here's the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs is right here. And that's just that far from today. So that's the origin of the Earth and the solar system way, way, way down there. Um, so it really gives you a sense of the true scale of geologic time. Uh, so we also have these beautiful wall displays all along. So this one here, we have some information on some of the recent events in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm sure people will be familiar with, with many of those. Um, so here, of course, this little stretch, this is most of geologic time that most people think about. They think about trilobites and dinosaurs, and that's all in here. And so we have a lot of information about you know, this era of diverse and abundance life. We have these uh, touch screens. I think maybe some of your viewers will recognize this guy with a bow tie there. <laughs> One thing that's pretty cool, we do have this uh, Columbia River basalts um, illustration. So if you want to see where a particular uh, layer of basalt is. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty cool here. Uh, so the idea was making it interactive. Um, Megan Weatherill, when she was with our department, worked with some students and produced these beautiful resin casts of some various fossils. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to have was have some things that were out here where people could actually see and touch them, that it wasn't all just stuff in behind glass display cases. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, about here, I mean, this is kind of the end of most of geologic time that people think about. You know, you get to the bottom of the Cambrian and it's like, well, you don't have any trilobites, you don't have all the, you know, it's kind of, you got the weird Ediacaran fauna back here, but pretty soon you get back into, huh, oh, well, don't have any uh, trilobites, any brachiopods, any, any fun stuff. But then we realized, well, we got this long hallway, we got to do something with it. Um, so we go back, so here we are a billion years ago is right here. Um, and so we realized we wanted to have these wall displays periodically along the hallway. And uh, the thing is, well, gosh, what do we do with all this part of geologic time? Most people don't think a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is, here we are about one and a half billion years ago. And I thought, well, the belt supergroup, that's 1.4 billion. Yeah. Uh, so this would be a nice opportunity to talk about the oldest rocks in Washington, uh, not just the belt supergroup, but also the Archean craton rocks and so here's another nice sample of built supergroup 
with some nice ripple marks you can rub your fingers over. Um, that, was, uh, that was a really nice sample we collected. And then uh, we went out and collected this sample of the pond array nice, so 2.65 billion years old from uh, Priest River area just over the border in Idaho. Uh, and we talk about uh, the cycling of continents and supercontinents. Um, we have all these little things. How do we know a little bit about you know, how geologists figure out uh, some of this information? Um, and so going further back in time then, here we are at 2 billion years, um, 2.5 billion years. We're getting into the Archean here. And so we thought, well, okay, what's around 2.5 billion years? And so one of the major events in Earth's history is the term the Great Oxidation Event. So the first major rise of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere as early photosynthetic organisms were producing enough oxygen that they could overwhelm uh, the tying up of that oxygen with iron. Um, and of course that set the stage for all sorts of uh, evolution of, of organisms like us today. Um, we have a little bit about the modern day uh, atmosphere uh, here. A little, uh, we also had these little plexiglass things with some slot in things that we can, we can update. So here's a little profile on some of Susan's research. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about ice cores and CO2. Um, decided to have a little connection with the economic side of things here. So that's where a lot of the iron, iron and steel that we use comes from mining uh, these deposits that were formed during this period. And then we were very fortunate to get this beautiful polished slab of banded iron formation from Western Australia just to show how beautiful uh, these rocks are. So the layers of iron oxide, so magnetite and uh, hematite, and then this reddish uh, chert layers, silica. Um, how did we obtain that? Uh, I think Wendy was actually the one who got in touch with uh, someone who sold us that piece as well as uh, another sample here we'll see in a minute. Um, so continuing further back, uh, here we are about 3.5 billion and of course that puts us at our earliest evidence for life. Um, so we really focus this on our earliest geologic evidence for life as for other geological properties uh, of, of the uh, Earth's history. So looking at, uh, you know, here's the famous 4.4 billion year old zircon from, from the Jack Hills, Australia. So that's our oldest individual mineral grain that's been dated, whereas our oldest actual intact rock, uh, about 4 billion years old, is up in, up in Canada, just to our north. And then uh, we got these beautiful samples of stromatolites. So stromatolites are one of those early life forms that's still with us today. Um, and here are a couple examples. I got these from one of my undergrad professors, Stan Aramek, who's a specialist in this. So we've got a um, Proterozoic stromatolite here. And then here's a beautiful Eocene stromatolite where you can see that characteristic layered form. Uh, so basically as layers of photosynthetic bacteria grow through photosynthesis, that triggers the precipitation of calcite. And that also traps any detrital minerals around and it gradually builds up over time. Um, so now we get back into the Hadean, so past where we actually have rocks, and uh, Keegan actually had the wonderful suggestion that we should have a cross-section of the Earth. And this is another thing that's really unusual, is to see a cross-section of the whole Earth at true scale where you can actually see all the different parts. Uh, so it's pretty common you'll see, you know, a, a cross-section showing this part of the Earth, or you'll see the whole Earth and it's, you know, about the size of a silver dollar on a textbook illustration and that's about it. Um, so kind of a fun story of creating this. So I was playing around with this and coming up, drafting up a cross section for the uh, illustration team who worked with us to really create these beautiful museum quality displays. Um, and so this is not a cross-section representing any one place on the real Earth, but it illustrates a range of geological processes that do occur on Earth. So of course, we wanted to have a subduction zone. And if you zoom in really close, you'll see a little bump there that's about one millimeter high. Wow. 
that is actually a true scale topographic profile of Mount Rainier, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. You can actually see it on the scale of the whole Earth. Wow. And we're taking some artistic license here. This is a true scale depth for the Marianas Trench right offshore. <laughs> so we're, we're taking some artistic license yeah, here. Yeah. Um, and obviously a very cartoony blob rep representing some magma. Um, and the subduction zone, we're obviously not getting down into Karnsiglok territory here. We're just kind of showing it very schematically. Uh, so here you can see, you know, the ocean, typical oceanic crust, typical oceanic lithosphere here. Again, very schematically. Um, if you look very closely, you'll see the ocean gets a little shallower over the mid-ocean ridge as it does in, in real life there. Um, here we just schematically illustrating uh, some hotspot volcanoes. So that is actually a true scale topographic profile of the big island of Hawaii. Um, I couldn't find a profile that covered all the other islands, so I just made some stuff up for those. Um, and then coming over here, we have a continental collision. So this is actually drafted up. I drafted this up based on uh, a geological and geophysical cross section for the India-Asia collision with the Himalaya and the Tibetan Plateau. Um, so obviously this is a very schematic representation here. Um, and then for kind of some more detail, we have some of these little bubbles here showing different information. So for example, uh, the mantle, the origin of the Earth's magnetic field, uh, the inner core, a um, little bit about the seismic techniques we know to where what's the depth of these different layers in the earth um, so this was a lot of fun we we had very extensive discussion over what the color scheme should be on the interior but it uh, really turned out beautifully um, and again you realize that where we live at the surface is just this minuscule skin over a whole bunch of action going on deeper in the surface. And even the stuff I talk about, the deep earth, I mean, I'm generally just up in this part yeah, yeah. here. Um, and our deepest direct samples come from around 800 kilometers or so from the lower mantle. And you can see there's a ton down there that is um, to be worked on, to be discovered. Uh, we also have some information here on kind of the different components of the earth. So from top down to the bottom, we got the atmosphere. I love this beautiful photo of, uh, this is of the space shuttle where you can really see the different layers of the atmosphere, uh, ocean circulation patterns. Um, and then we've got some rock samples to go with this. So this is to represent the different layers in the Earth. Um, so we already looked at a piece of Twin Sisters Dunite outside. Well, here's um, another piece here that's representing the mantle. Um, we cheated a little bit on this for the basalt. This is a sample from Hawaii. It's, it's a little more crystal rich and a little more interesting than maybe your typical mid-ocean ridge basalt. We thought that was okay. And then this is a North Cascades uh, tonalite sample representing the continental crust. Um, and then over here we have this beautiful cut and etched slab of an iron nickel meteorite. So this serves as representative of what the Earth's core is made of. Um, but it's also an example of meteorites and some of the material that the solar system formed out of. Um, and so this last panel here, so here we are, formation of Earth, probably this really should say formation of the solar system because the Earth formed over an interval of time. Uh, but this starting point here is based on the most up-to-date uh, age that we have for the oldest solid matter in the solar system. I believe it's 4563 million years, so 4.56 billion years of these calcium aluminum inclusions in meteorites is the oldest material dated. Obviously that's something over time that'll get updated, but uh, you know with the width of this line we got some wiggle room on our timeline. I don't think anyone's going to come after us. Uh, this last panel here was really cool. This was a collaboration with our physics department, so uh, Darcy Snowden and Cassie Falshear in physics uh, played a big role in creating this display, so really putting the geologic timeline into the scale of the whole universe and the solar system. Uh, so one idea that I really like that was suggested by a colleague was to put the geologic timeline right here in the scale of the timeline of the whole 
universe. Mm. Um, one thing I think is pretty impressive is to realize it's a pretty big part of that. It's about a third of it. Um, we have these displays here, so looking at the orbits of the planets on the scale. So if we had, uh, if the sun was uh, about the size of a beach ball where we're standing, where would the orbits of the different planets be? So Mars would be orbiting just about the end of the other hallway there. And you know, if you want to get out to uh, some of the outer planets, you're you're getting out towards the Fred Meyer uh, there. So kind of a neat spatial sense. Yep. Um, so a little bit about uh, the moon forming impact, the formation of the solar system, the planets, uh, the galaxies. Um, and uh, here, just a little introductory point on uh, geologic time. Uh, one thing that was rather fun was coming up with this little listing here to help people get a sense of the scale. Um, so at this scale, like I said, half inch equals a million years. Uh, so about the thickness of a strand of hair, that's about 4,000 years. So think about when the Great Pyramids were being built. Um, thickness of a postcard, that's when the last glacial maximum. So that's when that ice sheet, Puget Lobe of the Ice Sheet, was sitting on top of Seattle. Um, and then we had a lot of fun with this one. Um, for the amount of time that modern humans have existed, uh, it's about 200,000 years, and we're thinking, well, what's, what's about, you know, what's the right thickness, you know, thickness of a tortilla, you know, thickness of two dimes put together. So we came up with the length of a flea. Uh, that's, the, that's the amount of time on this scale of the timeline that uh, modern humans have existed. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Oh. And uh, we get to use this for classes, and, uh, you know, people, anyone coming through the building is welcome to come through and check it out. Um, there's a lot here. Okay, here we are, 4.6. Uh, we're starting up about here. Boom, moon forming impact. Uh, coming along here at the Hadean, we got our oldest rock, about 4 billion. You know, here we are, coming up on 3.5, earliest life. Life starts to proliferate and diversify, and that's had a profound impact on the whole Earth, including rise of atmosphere in the, ox in the, uh, in the atmosphere, and uh, of course, that's caused a whole slew of different minerals to form that couldn't form before. Um, coming up here, two billion, you know, we're now setting foot into uh, territory where there's rocks in the state of Washington you can walk around on. Uh, coming up here, one billion. And then, of course, if you're getting into exotic terrains territory, we've spent a lot of time up in this part of the, part of the timeline here. Um, so think about, uh, especially up here, Triassic, Jurassic, got a whole bunch of that. Tons of going on in the Cretaceous. Here's the crazy Eocene right in here. And uh, here we are today. So there you go, tour of geologic time. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Thanks, Nick.